Mningagwa ruined ZANU-PF business empire. The predictable appointment of FBC Holdings Chief Executive John Mashiovan who as the incoming Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe RBZ Governor has completed President Emerson Mningagwa's critical post-election deployments to fix the broken nation, especially the economy. Having consolidated power and taken control of the levers of the state, Mningagwa recently appointed a new cabinet and senior bureaucrats, securing a free reign to implement his policies, programs and reforms in his last constitutional term. New impetus is needed to revive the comatose economy and rescue some decent legacy from his messy and blotted record. Mashayavan who will take over from his namesake John Mangudia whose term expires on April 30, 2024. Mangudia has been reassigned to the Mutapa Investment Fund, formerly the Sovereign Wealth Fund. A quiet veteran banker who likes operating in the shadows, like the president himself. Mashayavan who is Umningagwa's close business and personal associate for a long time. They have worked together behind the scenes on private sector deals, ZANU-PF business networks, including the formation of FBC which was initiated by the ruling party and in the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC through the bank on which they were both directors for the Great Lakes country's operation. An insider told the news hawks Mashiovan who is considered the final piece of the puzzle by Imningogwa. As far as the president is concerned, Mashiovan who is the best guy to run the central bank and monetary policy offering new energy and direction. He is part of the bigger solution, the final piece of the puzzle in his team, the insider said. Their business network is big and wide, and includes the Joshi family Manhalo Kayunal and Jayant Kayunal Joshi that Uningagwa worked with at Zenu PF when he was still party treasurer and secretary for administration. Mashiavan who worked with the Joshi family at the bank and on the Zuva Petroleum deal when it acquired assets worth over 29 million US dollars from Masawara plc. Masawara had bought the assets from BP Shell in Zimbabwe. So Mashiavan who is part of the network, but he needs to forge good working relations with Finance Minister Mthulin Cube, his deputy Kudukwash David Mningogwa and Permanent Secretary George Kuvumatenga. Mengudi struggled with that team. Umningagwa's record of economic management is not impressive. He has not changed anything meaningful since he took charge in 2017. More worryingly, he presided over the collapse of the ZANU PF business empire when he was party treasurer general and secretary for administration. That backdrop makes his new appointments, including that of Mashiavanho, unlikely to change anything especially without a political solution and successful international re-engagement. ZANU-PF business empire collapse. In 2004, a high-profile ZANU-PF Politburo committee appointed by the late former President Robert Mugabe to investigate the state of the party's business empire learned that its companies, supervised by Uningogwa as administration secretary, were shambles due to gross mismanagement and corruption. A ZANU-PF report of the Committee on Party Investments, exclusively obtained at the time by the Zimbabwe Independent News Editor, now the News Hawks Managing Editor, revealed that the companies were riddled with managerial incompetence and corruption which prejudiced the ruling party of billions of dollars and assets. The report said some of the companies had virtually collapsed, while others had not been audited for years and their financial accounts were a complete mess. A ZW$650 million Traeger's holdings check for dividend declared on February 18, 2003 for the year ended December 31, 2002 could not be accounted for. The report said it was inconceivable that Traeger's, in which ZANU-PF had 41.96% shareholding, managed to declare a ZW$1.2 billion dividend in four years when its annual turnover was about ZW$150 billion. There were further queries over the murky investment of ZW$120 million in the portfolio investment company MS Investments by ZANU-PF's wholly owned investment arm, MS Syndicate Private Ltd. ZANU-PF had interests in public and private companies held through MS Syndicate Private Limited. The ruling party has invested in Traeger Holdings, Mike Appel, Cater Craft, 
fibrolite. Closed last December, Zidli, which failed to take over Delta in 1989 and now runs duty-free shops, Southern African Reinsurance Company say, Zidco Holdings and First Bank, whose Democratic Republic of Congo DRC investment collapsed. Umningagwa and Mashiovan who were directors in the collapsed DRC investment. Another company, Namzim, was closed due to mismanagement and the property was looted by unknown people. The report said. ZANU-PF also had interests in National Blankets, Woolworths and Ottawa Building, which were disposed of in unclear circumstances. Furthermore, ZANU-PF separately owns Jongwe Printing Publishing Company, as well as Jongwe and Nyadzonu Farms. Some companies' books, for instance those of Cater Craft, had not been audited for at least four years and there have been no board meetings for two years. Umningagwa, who was interviewed twice by the probe committee because he holds sway over the party's network of companies, confirmed the chaos in the businesses by admitting most of the companies have no records. He Umningagwa said that in most of these arrangements there were no written agreements on the formation of the companies and most of these agreements were done verbally between parties. The report said. Neither was there an agreement for payment of management fees to the Joshi brothers as these companies were operating as one. Umningagwa, who sat on nearly all companies' boards, supervised MS Syndicate with Manhalo Kayunal and Giant Kayunal Joshi. The two were linked to ZANU-PF by the party's external secretary Didymus Mutosa and former secretary general. The late Edgar Tekera in 1979. However, the Joshi brothers and Deepak Pandya fled the country in April shortly after the probe began in 2004. Several ZANU-PF officials were quizzed about their escape. Mutasa said at the time the three ran away from being arrested and were in regular contact with him. He said Giant was believed to be in Dubai, while Manhalo was in Manchester, England. Some of the ZANU-PF investments such as in Bindura Nickel Mine were also unclear. ZANU-PF had 23% equity in Bindura through the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. Further inquiries into this investment were recommended. There are also fears that companies like Traegers could have externalized funds. As a result, the report recommended that the police-slash-law enforcement agents should go into further investigations in order to establish any prejudice in terms of revenue to the party on its investments. More investigations were required into the shady MSZW$120 million investment, Fibrolite and Catercraft operations, the unaccounted for ZW$650 million Traeger's dividend and other dividends declared without audited accounts as well as Mike Appel's dividend declarations. The report said it is surprising Mike Appel declared a ZW$31 million dividend in 2003, but ZW$250 million that year. Say and shelf companies like MS Investments. Segmented investments through which ZANU-PF had a 27% interest in First Bank now FBC and Smooth Nest Investments, Hudsonville and Amelia Properties, the report said, should also be further investigated. There were also calls for the committee to find out if ZANU-PF has interests in Africa resources, Banco Nacional of Mozambique, DRC Bank and Shabani and Mashaba Mines. Insiders say Mashiovan who has his work cut out. The first thing is win the president's confidence, which he already has. The second thing is win the confidence of Nkub, Kudikwash Umningagwa and Guvumatenga, a source said. While the economy will record growth of around 4.8% this year and 3.5% next year, Mashiovan who needs to focus on macroeconomic stabilization and transformational structural reforms. The perennial issue of currency reform and stability will be one of the biggest challenges he will face. Local currency inflation and exchange rate pressures have abetted in recent months. Following significant price increases and exchange rate depreciation in the second quarter of 2023, and volatility is still high.
Will he go further than stabilizing the foreign exchange market and lowering inflation through the tightening of liquidity conditions? Which is what Mengudia is doing? What will he do to narrow the parallel foreign currency exchange market premium, which is above 30%, and lower inflation which remains high? The fiscal deficit. Excluding quasi-fiscal operations QFOs, is projected at 2.3% of GDP in 2023, the source said. It will be important for Mashayovanhut to comprehensively address the RBZ's quasi-fiscal operations. That remains imperative to mitigate liquidity pressures and thus re-anchor inflation expectations. He needs an enhanced liquidity management framework, including through the use of appropriate interest-bearing instruments by the RBZ to mop up excess liquidity. Second, the consolidated fiscal stance, including QFOs, should be aligned with the short-term stabilization objectives. Third, there is an urgent need to accelerate the foreign exchange market reform. By allowing more flexibility in the official exchange rate through a more transparent and market-driven price discovery, removing the restrictions on the exchange rate at which banks, authorized dealers, and businesses can transact, and further minimizing export surrender requirements. Structural reforms aimed at improving the business climate and reducing governance vulnerabilities are key for promoting sustained and inclusive growth and would bode well for supporting Zimbabwe's development agenda. Will Mashayavan who address the resolution of debt overhang, revenue mobilization, expenditure control, financial supervision, debt management, economic governance, and macroeconomic issues? Government under pressure. Zimbabwe is currently under pressure from the International Monetary Fund IMF, World Bank and African Development Bank AFDB to address reforms and debt issues. An IMF staff team led by Wojciech Maliszewski visited in Harare from 18 to 25 October to discuss recent economic developments and the economic outlook. More recently, on December 1st. IMF Director of the African Department Abebe Emro Selesi and the World Bank's Country Director for Malawi, Tanzania, Zambia and Zimbabwe, Nathan Bilit, were in Harare for meetings with Umningagwa, Nkube and Mangudia, as well as other officials to discuss the economic situation, reforms and debt issues. Please like, comment, share and follow this channel for more information or updates on news and entertainment.